Hey y'all, we're back. Ooh, <laughs> no, let's do that again. Hey y'all, we're back with some more Neopets. Today we are going to be taking a look a little bit at how I've been making money in Neopets, how things are going, and this new guy right here, Ashcomb, and how I adopted him. So I'm gonna be talking about him a little bit, and I'm going to be talking about my shop restocking because I said last time I was going to talk about restocking so let's talk a little bit about restocking so the first thing I want to check out here is the stock market because yesterday one of my stocks was doing pretty well yeah look at that so we are sitting here at 33 still not where I'm comfortable selling it but you know when you buy it at 15 33 is a pretty good price but we have like one at 18 one at 20 and then all of the rest of them are below 15 which is to be expected. Not all of them are gonna be winners. That's the way that it works. You may notice that I don't have um, maybe as many as I should. I've been playing for about a month, so I should definitely have a larger number of stocks than this. I have like 1,000 here, um, 2,000 and a couple of them. When I got sick, I was not playing the stock market. I was barely able to log in every day for Trudy Surprise, and I actually did ruin my Trudy Surprise streak so i just kind of let the stock sit and i actually think that that's worked out okay right now with the amount of neo points i have i'm planning on selling them when they hit 45. it can be lower or higher for you depending on just like how much profit you want to make on them because i don't have that much money in the bank in general i have it as lower than i do on my main account where i wait until like 60. so let's go to the bank real quick collect our interest it's at 72 right now um i upgraded it a couple of times in the first couple weeks so my interest rate is currently 9.5%, which is like, you know, 26,000 Neo points a year. We can do better than that, but that's pretty good. So right now we're gonna take a look at the shop. I probably haven't sold anything today because I haven't really messed with it too much. Oh no, 400, someone bought something for 400. I have actually done pretty well with my shop. I have made maybe 20,000 to 30,000 Neo points so far, and I really haven't been doing the shop very seriously. Let's explain the way that I do it real quick. Right now my current stock is is like a pretty good mix of how I handle this, right? So the Magic Ghost Marshmallows are from the Spooky Food Store. So it is, I believe, the Mint Ice Cream Apple Lantern. The Fake Hand is from the Igloo Garage Sale. The Dung Table Lamp is from some daily that I did. Books are either from the bookstore or from the Igloo Garage Sale. This book is never gonna get moved. And actually, we're gonna talk about that um, with like mistakes with restocking because I actually made a big mistake with this book and we're gonna talk about that. So I don't have access to the Super Shop Wizard. The Super Shop Wizard is a feature that you have access to if you have a premium paid Neopets account that allows you to search every shop on Neopets at once. The regular shop wizard searches specific sections. If you have a store in Neopets, your store belongs to a specific like block of stores. He will search one block of stores at a time. You can see the shop owner and you can see the price here. You'll see that it is a different set of items. And that's because he's searching a different block of shops. Um, and if you have the super shop wizard, you can just search everything at once. I don't have access. So I typically do a couple of searches to make sure there's not a huge chance that I'm going to be like undercut by a huge amount. So another thing, Jelly Neo's item database will like show you sort of the price history and how it's been moving up and down. As of two days ago, it was at 870 and it had gone up. I feel pretty comfortable saying, okay, let's put it at 900. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to check the prices of things, lower the prices a little bit and just like adjust and I'll be right back. Okay, all right, so I'm all done and hopefully some of these will move, but I have a lot of open space right now. I have 17 free spots, so now is the time to like really check it out. Restocking on Neopets is the act of visiting one of the many in-game stores throughout Neopia and buying sought after or rare items to sell, trade, or auction for the purpose of making profit. To understand exactly how it works, you gotta understand how items are generated on Neopets. Shops generate items throughout the day, dozens of times per hour. 
It's not in a predictable pattern, despite what the shops say. Restocks can take from 40 minutes to a couple of seconds. Items are stocked in limited quantities, randomly pulled from a table of possible options. Rarer items show up less frequently and in lower quantities. Neopian consumers can visit the shops and purchase the items. It's important to know that for most Neopian shops, the sale price is not the final one. Buyers of items can engage in haggling, a system of trying to get the price as low as possible. Haggling can result in a decent discount, increasing your final profit. Because the items are sold in limited amounts, they tend to sell out eventually. Shops will also periodically wipe any unsold stock from their stores to prepare for the next restock. This means their rarer items are a hot commodity for restockers, who are not guaranteed a high-value, highly desired item every time it restocks. Added to this is the fact that other Neopians are doing the exact same thing, likely at the same shops as you. Because of this, restocking certain stores can be a high-pressure activity, requiring constant refreshing of shops just for a chance of having fast enough refluxes to buy the best items. Restocking is something that must be learned. It takes practice. There are a bunch of helpful pages written by Neopians about how to hone these skills and which shops are lower pressure while learning the ropes. However, some of the higher difficulty restocks include Calvaris Magic Shop, which sells morphing potions, and the Meridel Food Shop, which can stock drake eggs. Some of these can go for over a million Neopians, so you can see that there's a lot on the line. Right now, this account is fewer than three months old, which means I can't see items above a certain rarity in shops. This makes restocking less of a huge moneymaker for me, but you can still make some consistent Neopians points by restocking lower rarity items. So the first place that I recommend restocking if you're starting out on Neopad where I made a little chunk of money in the beginning is at the Igloo Garage Sale. So to get there you just go to Terror Mountain and you go to the top of the mountain and you click Igloo Garage Sale. There's also the game which I'm a fan of, but you want the actual Igloo Garage Sale. So the Igloo Garage Sale acts differently than most other shops in that you can't haggle. It's not one of those shops. And they have a lot of really cool stuff at a discounted price from where they would normally be. Whoa. 1500 huh? So I'm going to click on that. I want that. Look at that. Incredible. So, so the garage sale won't stock anything with a rarity higher than 89 but that's actually not bad because there are a couple of really cool items on neopets that have a rarity lower than 89. one thing that qualifies and can be restocked in the igloo garage sale are tan code stones those are always popular people always need them and always want them so those are a good thing to click on when you see them the Igloo Garage Sale will also just sell a couple of items that will be used in fairy quests and things. The Igloo Garage Sale does have a limit to the amount of things you can buy within a certain period of time. So for like, for example, if I wanted to buy this coffee and marshmallows, um, I couldn't because I just purchased something. Oh, never mind. <laughs> well, okay, let's try this again. I just bought this coffee and marshmallows, which is like not a big deal. But if I try to buy a second coffee and marshmallows, uh, give everybody else a chance to buy stuff. It's like... I think it's about a minute. So we got the Air Fairy Eraser. We bought for about 300 Neo points. And let's see what the shop wizard says. Okay, so the shop wizard, this one's got it priced at that. Just because it's at that price doesn't mean that's what it's going to sell for. But it does mean that it's not being undercut. And put it in for... 2700 so that's the igloo garage sale in a nutshell i think it's a pretty cool way of just like casually restocking if you have a shop and you don't put a lot of stuff in it you get stuff cheap and you can make like a couple hundred neo points profit to sometimes if you're lucky a couple of thousand neo points profit without really trying that hard <laughs> i just refreshed the igloo garage sale like between games so this is sort of a casual restocking <laughs> You probably could do it more seriously. You probably could try like the like mashing F5 method. It probably doesn't hurt to be on your refresh game. Because the pool is so large, I don't think that it's the most efficient use of your time if you're planning on doing very serious restocking. So let's talk about where I like to restock as a newbie restocker. So restocking is something that I just started doing this year. When I was a kid, restocking was basically impossible for me because I had dial-up internet. I don't remember when Neopets put the captcha system in but before they put the captcha system in people were botting and it was just really hard to do any restocking so i didn't mess with it mostly what you're going to see when you go into one of these stores is uh, standard non-rare books and like these can 
be okay, actually. This one is 485 Neo points. Um, the Shop Wizard says that it sells for about a thousand. You could purchase this Mirka's Bad Day book, put it in your shop, and make a pretty okay profit on it. Books are cool because people are constantly trying to like, give them to their pets. Some of these you're not going to make any money on. Mostly with these more common books, you want a lower priced book. So what's a rare book? My knowledge of how rare books work, and this might be like not exactly perfect. There are multiples of like 5,000. 2,500, 5,000, 10,000 are rare books that are harder to find. They show up in lower quantities in the bookshop. I like the bookshop because all books go towards adding to your pet's intelligence. You can just only read a pet a book one time. Here we go. Here is, so you need to really be faster than me. Okay, so this is 2,500, which is like not super great. And then you, that was probably like, really? I probably paid too much. Oh no. Okay, okay, how's that? Okay, I got it. I didn't check. <laughs> I might have spent too much so it's rare as the price goes up it goes from rare to ultra rare etc etc let's see how much okay so i overpaid for this thing which is a major bummer it's definitely one of the things that can happen you're excited you make a mistake and i think that that's okay just messed up kind of bad so let's talk about the second place that i like to restock and that's in the deserted fairground in the haunted woods the spooky food the items that restock here are required for a number of different quests which make them pretty desirable if you've ever done like the esophagor slash brain tree quest line then you know that like they ask for spooky food all the time and that that can get pretty expensive Part of me feels kind of gross for perpetuating this cycle of being like, well, if you want spooky food, you have to buy it from a user who sat here and refreshed to make sure that they could gouge the price. <laughs> I don't think any of these are good. There are a couple of items that will restock here at spooky food that are better than these. Oh, okay, wait, here's a couple. Okay, this drool is worth something. This drool is, oh, it's gone. I was too slow. This is why you gotta know what's good. So as you saw, knowing what's good to buy is really important because you can buy something that is um, not worth buying, like me, in your hurry to buy something good, or like me, you can miss something that is good just because you're not familiar with the items. Obviously, eventually, as you explore the shops more and you spend more time here, I'm gonna remember that that weird goopy thing <laughs> is good. Like, I'm gonna remember that that's a good thing to buy. And so the next time I see it, I'm gonna grab it. So I'm gonna spend a couple more hours today maybe doing some restocking. I'm gonna record it um, with me off camera and we'll see how we did. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later. But in the meantime, I wanna talk about something that's happening on Neopets right now, the Neo, Neo Bees. And this is like, I guess a fun, annual award ceremony and every day you will cast a ballot today it's the best mystery capsule so it's the best like loot box i didn't buy any of these I vote for the mist the, the 20th anniversary one and the reason i'm voting is because i got an item so you get something cool and they've had some winners announced so far this is something that's happening right now in neopets and you could go do it right now in your account if you wanted to and i think that's cool and you know what i think that one absolutely deserved to win they're all very cool uh, the best species specific outfit. Obviously the witch eerie deserved to win in my opinion. I think that's really great, but this, the snow beast is cool too. They're all good. So anyway, I'm going to be doing some restocking. And then after that, we're going to talk about Ashcomb the loop here. One thing I didn't talk about is banning. It's not as scary as it sounds, I promise. You can get shop banned if you refresh too much or for too long, but honestly, it's only happened to me once. It basically means that all shops appear out of stock to you for a short time. It's ostensibly to prevent botting or other types of cheating, but the rules honestly are applied inconsistently. So I restocked for a few hours after I finished this recording and I didn't have a lot of luck. I restocked a couple of stores, but I was mostly focused on the spooky food shop. I actually saw a couple of good items there, but since I'm new to it, I didn't act fast enough and lost them to other restockers. 
I did luck into a couple of low rarity foods that net a profit of a couple thousand neo points. I put them in my shop and I hope they'd sell quickly, even though they're less rare and therefore easier to find in shops. As of this recording, one of those has sold, netting me a profit of about a thousand neo points. On the whole, restocking takes a lot of practice. I'm still pretty terrible at it, but it's a fun kind of mindless activity while I'm chatting with someone or listening to a podcast. Just don't make the same mistakes I did and buy something you're going to take a loss on and you'll be fine. The last thing I want to talk about is Ashcomb. This is Ashcomb. I found him while doing one of my favorite Neopets activities, cruising the pound board. The pound board is one of my favorites on the site. I like seeing what players are putting up for trade and what's popular at the moment, but more exciting are the pound surfing and stuck pet boards. So these threads are exactly what they sound like. Pound surfing threads are full of players refreshing the Neopian pound and sharing cool, rare, and painted pets that they find there. The pound is honestly kind of a frightening mess with pets like names like Pikachu 66114 and I am an ugly growl. But there can be some gold hidden in there too, and some kind-hearted Neopians are on a mission to help those find homes. The stuck pet board is a little more complicated. Basically, due to a glitch with the way the pound works, certain pets can't be found using the regular pound browsing feature. They have to be discovered by typing in their name in the pound search bar. These pets are known as stuck, because without Neopians working to find them, they'd be trapped in the pound forever. It takes a lot of work to find a stuck pet. You have to know the naming conventions that make a pet stuck in the first place. These people then try dozens or hundreds of variations on these names just for a chance at finding a pet that might be there. The upshot of all this work is that there are some real gems hidden stuck in the pound. Every day on the board people find really old pets, pets with dope battle gnome stats, or my favorite, pets with some really cool names. That's how I found Ashcomb. He's a red loop, which is honestly kind of a boring little guy, except that I really loved his name. It's not a real word or a real name as far as I can tell, but I just like it. Something about it makes me think of Victorian England. I want to put him in a little top hat and make him all dapper and fancy. I was really drawn to his name, so I adopted him after someone posted him to the Stuck Pets board. My plan for Ashcomb is to make him a Battle Dome pet. I'm hoping that if I can do that, I might be able to trade up for a better named pet or maybe an unconverted pet. Yeah, I know, in my dreams. I'm going to talk more about that next time. So until then, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.